Hello fellow light being humans, this is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard and welcome back to the thunderwizard.com YouTube channel. This video is uh, from a recent interview I did for Phantom Phil over at unexplainedinc.com and he has a podcast, the Unexplained Incorporated um, podcast and he talks about all kinds of things including uh, extraterrestrials, UFOs, um, ghosts, other kinds of uh, really interesting paranormal stuff. So if you want to check out his other podcasts, please go to his website unexplainedinc.com. For now, sit back and relax. This is a pretty long interview and so we talk about a lot of different stuff and you know me once I get started I can't shut up so um, I hope you enjoy it and again if you want to go check him out go to unexplainedinc.com if you're new to the channel before you do anything else please subscribe hit the like button comment so that YouTube will start getting me the exposure that I think these um, topics deserve so uh, subscribe like hit the comment button if you're new to my channel check out all of the other valuable tools that I have. There are free tools on the thunderwizard.com page. If you go to the playlists, we have the guided interdimensional meditations. We have the energy work, which is the Qigong folder. We have the 12 steps to 5D. There's millions of other videos. Watch, binge watch as many as you can. When you're dead serious about learning how to access the power that allows me to interact with higher dimensional beings and travel to higher dimensions, go up here to thunderwizard.com. Subscribe to the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. Also check out my books at michaelwilliamdenny.com and you can read those interdimensional revolution extraterrestrials are coming to earth and the shamanic secret commandment to a perfect life including a, many other uh, very valuable books so having said that now let's just go ahead and get into this very in-depth interview and i will see you guys all very soon thank you so very much for showing up True believers, it was almost a year ago when I met some very important people who originally resided from the land of Down Under, Australia. Tonight I'm really excited because I have a first-time guest who I believe comes way of the United States, but resides in Australia, and this first-time guest, his name is Michael Denny, he is more commonly known as the man behind thunderwizard.com michael the thunder wizard welcome to unexplained incorporated for the first time this is going to be a great chat tonight and i'm so happy to have you i'm really happy to be here and i'm so grateful that you've allowed me to come on here and share my experiences beautiful so i'll just mention real quick about how i discovered you um it's funny because some of the best things I discover online, I don't even remember how I connect with them. I just kind of flow into them. And I'm going to say probably around two, two and a half years ago, I came across your YouTube channel, which is Thunder Wizard at Thunder Wizard. And I love the tagline here, real esoteric spirituality without all of the nonsense. And that's that's a pretty accurate description, correct? <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, I'm a very practical person and I really focus on actual results. And so, yeah, I, I try and be that guy who goes as far off the map as possible 
but staying within the realms of things that we can actually experience. That's tremendous. And uh, we're going to decipher a little bit later on what is the nonsense and what isn't, because in today's world, and it's funny, earlier today, I appeared on a friend's uh, brand new podcast that he's launching, and we got into some pretty deep discussions about modern spirituality and uh, what's good about it, what's not so good about it, what should you invest in and what you should avoid. And I'm pretty sure some of those same topics are going to come up in our discussion tonight. So, Michael, since you are our first time guest and I do this with all first time appearances on the show, I'd like to know a little bit about your background and how you ended up in Australia. But before we get there, what is the being on the on the painting behind you, just so we're all clear here, because it looks it looks amazing. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, um, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. And so I like to have uh, something behind so you're not looking at a wall because I'm usually moving around from places. So yeah. to be honest, I just thought it was cool looking. Um, and it also uh, aligns with my focus lately, which is higher dimensional beings of light. And I thought, wow, that's I've seen beings that look similar to that. But um it's not a it's not a specific entity or anything that I've you know got a picture of it. I just thought it was cool. Okay, well that's the same reason I have the monitor here behind me with the uh, the graphic and the tagline because here where I record it's just not that aesthetically pleasing. So that's why I put the barrier up and it looks way better. So I mean it's good we're on the same page with that. So tell me a little bit about um, your journey. I love hearing about people's journeys. Um, you ended up down under. I'd like to know kind of what you did before you started the work for thunderwizard.com and went on this path, because like we all start somewhere and sometimes we don't always end up where we think we're going and it's the best direction to go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually a very circuitous route. Um, the short answer is uh, I got here because my main focus of my life and one of my main teachings is uh, I don't want to leave this life with any regrets. Mm. So whatever it is I want to do, I do it. No matter how difficult, how impossible, even if I think it, I might die in the process, I do it. So the short answer is that's how I ended up here because I realized um, I wanted to live and, you know, South America, yeah, but the infrastructure, this. And, and so uh, one day uh, somebody just suggested that I go check it out. And I did, and I fell in love with it. Um, what had happened just before that, I'll, I'm going backwards in time, yep. uh, based on your question. But what happened just before that is that um, I had gotten divorced. I, I ended up moving to Idaho. That's not the great, greatest place for surfers to live. Um, to <laughs> a little marry bit somebody. Locked, yeah. Yeah, it was just there's not a lot of waves up there. Um, but I, I moved up there to marry uh, somebody. We were together for 10 years and it, it fell apart. And uh, I, I crash landed back into Southern California and had to learn how to surf all over again. You know, I was middle aged and hadn't surfed in 10 years. And um, then I fell in love again uh, with a woman who I still consider to be my soulmate, who unfortunately she passed away. Mm. My, you know, my parents had passed away, my friends, and I'm living in Southern California, and I'm not enjoying myself. And I just went, you know what, I'm I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going to go, I'm gonna, but I'm going to go. And then somebody said, go here, and gave me the exact location. And I said, okay, I'll check it out. And sure enough, I got here, and I was just absolutely blown away. And I said, this is my home. So that's how I ended up here. Uh, to go further back, to answer your question, um, I, as a little kid, I was a very religious little kid that had a very strong, strong emotional attachment to, you know, the religion of my, I mean, which was born again Christianity. So I did all that for a while, so much so that I, you know, after, you know, sowing my wild oats in high school, I then rededicated myself to a spiritual path. And went off to uh, Bible school to become a minister. And I was going to go to seminary and all that. And I did things like preach on the street. I ended up being an exorcist. I wasn't my choice. I just 
for whatever reason, I knew how to do it. And I would go places and there'd be demon possessed people. And I did that for a while until I realized that uh, while exer- while demon possession is a real thing, people who are possessed actually have very serious psychological problems, which is what opens up the door for that. And I said, you know what, they need a therapist a lot more than I need to go expose myself to that horrifically toxic energy. So I gave that up. Uh, I then walked away from Christianity um, for practical reasons. I couldn't tolerate the thought of worshiping a God who allowed people to die in hell simply because they weren't in the right club. I just I just couldn't live with that. And even though I believed it, I couldn't do it. Looking back on it, it was the ballsiest thing I can imagine anybody doing. But I basically went to the God that I believe existed. And I said, I'd rather go to hell than do this. So I'm out here. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, then, of course, I came out of that religion and woke up and realized that's all a bunch of nonsense. What is real? And... I ended up completely by chance, I ended up in this extremely private, esoteric martial art class that they said, um, this is a practice that teaches people how to fight demons with their bare hands. And what I wanted, the way I got there was, is that um, I wanted to learn a martial art um, because because I, I had an anger problem back then. You know, mm. and um, I had there had been numerous times where I'd have really close calls, and I knew that if I had lost my temper, I I might really hurt somebody, and or I might end up getting really hurt. And so I decided I wanted to do a martial art, but I wanted an energetic martial art, something that was, um, you know, that wasn't about violence or beating people up, but was about energy. And I bumped into this guy again. The world. The universe has done such amazing things to me that's like it's just like it's come out of a movie. I'm I'm working at a temp job and this Native American guy, he's like over six feet tall, hair down to the ground, and <laughs> he hears me talking to my friend saying, Hmm, should I do Wing Chun or Aikido? I want to do something with energy. And he goes, Oh, you want to do an energetic martial art? And I said, Yeah. He says, Here, he writes down the address. He says, Come to this. And I said, What is it? He says, Just go. And I asked him questions. What is it? What is it? And every time I asked him a question, it didn't make any sense. He said, just show up. And I walk into the, the door and there are these, him, you know, he's over six feet tall. And then there's this little, turns out he's a Japanese guy. It's a Chinese martial art, but he's a Japanese guy. And he's shorter than I am. And they're doing this weird little dance. And I was a weightlifter at the time. So I walk in and I'm, you know, I'm yoked. And, and, uh, and I'm trying not to laugh because I don't, these guys are doing this little tap dance. And uh, so I decided I would give it a try because what have I got to lose, right? And I find out that it's this really crazy, esoteric, spiritual practice that that has going back 2,000 years to tapping into energies and, and tapping into to ascended masters. And, you know, and if you learn this stuff, one of the things is you'll be able to literally fight demons with your bare hands and destroy them, walk into places, cleanse places. And you'll also be a serious badass. And you'll be able to, you know, barely, just like the movies, barely tap somebody, energy will go into them and, you know, fly across the room. And so I said, what the hell have I got to lose? And, um, you know, I'm trying to do these postures and I can't because I'm so stiff. And they're laughing at me for that. And this little Japanese guy, I could have picked him up and tossed him across the room. He says, um, I'm going to show you what this is. And he he gets one of the other students and he says, now I want you to grab onto my arm here. So I grabbed onto his arm and he says, he says, I want you to see if I use any muscle at all. I said, okay. And he literally just taps the guy and you hear this thud and, the, and it looks like it's unreal. But it looks, it looks like some unseen force just, you know, and the loud thud and the crack. Sure enough, the guy hadn't done anything. He just barely moved his hand like that. Mm. And then he says, I'm going to do it to you. And he taps me on the chest, and it felt like a bomb went off inside of me, and it felt like something screamed at my soul, and I'd never felt anything like it. And and then I saw how fast this guy was and how many – he could hit you like 100 times a second. And I'm like, you know, if this guy wanted to destroy me, there's nothing I could do. I wouldn't be able to stop. And I was hooked. And then – the more I did it, the more I started finding out that the forms that we were doing were actually 
creating these physical yantras that open up other portals to dimensions. And if you master them, you can go to other dimensions and it just turns into this really crazy wah. And it completely, totally blew my mind. And I, the first night I went home and I was trying to get that weird posture and I felt this energy, this very powerful, beautiful, blissful energy, like just pure love and bliss, like, like better than any drug completely filled my body. There was a being on the left side of my, uh, to me, I couldn't see it, but I could sense it. I saw this picture in my mind of a nuclear bomb going. And this being telepathically says to me, this is the power you're tapping into. You've been chosen to do this, to do this. And if you misuse it, we will take it away from you. Mm -hmm. And then as fast as it showed up, the energy was gone. Scared the crap out of me. I'm still trying to get out of the whole Christian thing. And that's like, well, did a demon, was that, you know. Um, but I stuck with it because I said, you know, nothing evil could feel this good. It just doesn't, there's just no possible way. I've been in the presence of demons. This is not demonic. This is, you know, this is what I've been looking for. So I spent, you know, a good 10, 20 years completely focused on that. Uh, you know, I'm right now, I'm 100, 205 pounds. I could probably lose 20 pounds of fat, but, you know, I'm, I'm naturally a, a stocky, muscular guy. Mm -hmm. I was training so hard in this that I got down to 145 pounds. Oh. I, was, you know, I wasn't unhealthy, but I was just, you know, just like there's so much energy going through me. And it, I got so, so out there that I was literally walking around uh, and I felt kind of like I was a skull, you know, a skeleton in a body. And there were all these, you know, other just things walking around and I could see into people's auras. And I, mm. you know, it was just, I, you know, I, I wasn't really here anymore. And I knew why those guys spent all their time up in the mountains and all that. So I decided I wanted to come back down to reality. So I slowly pulled myself out of it and I started doing more physical, muscular things, started uh, dating. I was, you know, I'd been celibate for six and a half years and I decided to get back into, you know, being just a normal human. And, um, you know, I didn't get into the stuff. I tried to be an actor for, I was an actor for, you know, 10 or so years, had my own theater company and, and, Hollywood and did a few movies and TV, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, then fast forward, moving to Idaho to get married. And then the divorce happened. And then I ended up um, back in California. And then I ended up here. So, you know, now I've got my channel because for the past 10, 15 years, I've been finally listening to all of the you know, the inclinations inside of me to share this. And I'm not afraid of how people are going to see me or view me. And I'm not afraid of being judged anymore. So I've been teaching that for 10 years. And um, that pays just enough for me to pay the bills. And then I travel wherever I want to travel. And right now I'm, I'm here living in absolute paradise. So mm. there you go. Very nice. That's how um, so those martial arts obviously opened you up big time. And we all have our experiences on these paths where certain things open us up. For me, over a decade ago, it was getting my first Reiki session and then getting premonitions in mm -hmm. my dreams and such. Um, throughout your channel, you say a lot of interesting things on the state of the world and goings on in the world. And I'm curious to ask, um, how was life for you down in the height of lockdowns um up here in canada it seemed like we had tighter restrictions than most places but then down australia way it was at a whole other level and i know this from some of the people i've talked to on this show and some of those people in fact have moved off of the mainland and onto islands in the south pacific because they just don't like the direction of where things are going anymore. So how was your experience with it? Cause I know you've talked about it a bit on the channel. Yeah, I, I was lucky. Um, I'm here in Queensland and um, I'm in a, you know, it's not rural, but you know, we're not in a huge city. I'm about, you know, an hour and a half North of Brisbane and just, you know, little beach towns up and down the coast. 
Um, so what Queensland did is they completely locked themselves away from the entire world, including the rest of Australia. Mm. So nobody could get in. You could get out, but if you got out, you wouldn't get, be able to get back in. So I didn't have any reason to leave. And it was great because then even the crowds were thinned out even more. So I was happy. Mm. I was hearing about all the things that were going on. And, and to be honest, I was so wrapped up in just me enjoying my life, it would just sort of trickle in. But towards the end there, um, I became aware of what was going on. We had a brief lockdown here, which I didn't care about because it was so early in the pandemic. I didn't know what was what. And so I was fine with that. Um, but by the end, uh, September, was it September of 2021? By the end of September 2021, I had completely, totally changed my mind about everything. Mm. But for me, my experience, I was actually very lucky because, um, like I said, they blocked everything off. I ended up leaving here for a year and I went back to, excuse me, I went back to the States and lived in Florida. And I did that because I'm not vaccinated. Yeah. And they were locking people up here. And, um, you know, they were doing things in some places, like if you even had talked to somebody who might have been in the presence of somebody who had tested positive, they'd lock you up. Hmm. And so when they started talking about opening the borders here, uh, I said, I'm going to get out of here because I don't know what's going to happen. This could turn into, you know, the things that went on in Melbourne and uh, Sydney, and I didn't want to be a part of that. And so I went to to Florida because that was a you know a safe place. They weren't going to force me to do anything or you know keep mm -hmm. me from doing. Um, so my experience was I like you. I was watching it on on television, and it was extremely frightening. I, I you know I mean when I got here on, in 2019, the United States that I left and the United States that I came back to were two completely different countries. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, Australia and Canada, you know, we believe these countries to be open and free. I mean, they're even more free, more uh, democratic than the United States. And it's like, you know, we're it's totally different. It's just yeah. a different world. What a lot of people don't consciously always realize and understand, though, is that we're actually still heavily tied in serving the crown, which is isn't always on the up and up but it's there and it shows especially in times like these so i think um a lot of people's eyes maybe got opened and here's something i want to discuss real briefly is uh many people in spiritual communities and realms say that 2020 was a great shift and a great awakening for people do you agree with those statements at all um did we go through a major shift or begin a major shift many would say that we did I would say yes. Uh, you know, I myself, right up until September of 2021, I was part of the narrative. Now, mm. I had, I was hesitant, you know, but it wasn't because I had any, I, I just didn't, I didn't need to get doinked yeah. and I didn't, I wasn't sure and I wasn't going to do it until I was sure. But when, you know, Things started coming out about uh, certain medical procedures being uh, made illegal that were completely, you know, up until that time seen as as harmless at, at worst. They were harmless at worst, perhaps good at best. And these were being, you know, people were were doctors were having their license taken away, and you know, and medications being completely taken off. I just said this something's up. Yeah. This is this means something's up. So, you know, I obviously I can't go into it if I'm going to put this on my channel, but yeah. I it, yeah. just all I had to do was, you know, like you start peeling away at the wallpaper and you find out, oh, this is it's a whole different deal. So for me that was a huge awakening and it was actually at that time that I was becoming awakened about that, that I actually had my first extraterrestrial uh, encounter. I didn't realize that's what was happening, but, um, you know, it, I went from being this, yes, I was an esoteric spiritual guy, um, but I was pretty much part of the narrative, you know, go to college, pay your taxes, 
and listen to, you know, the three lettered organizations that are protecting us and, you know, listen to the, um, the intelligence community, you know, I, I, you know, I was a, I was a good citizen. Yeah. And I went from that to being about as far away from the narrative, I think, as anybody can get. And it happened within a matter of weeks and months. So yeah. do I think there was an awakening? Absolutely. I was awake. In fact, before that, I've always known my whole life that if I really want to figure something out, I just close my eyes and I ask whatever. I say, give me one word, you know, and, you know, tell me what I what, what I can do to go forward. And I was asking that. And for about a year, when I would close my eyes and say, you know, tell me what to do, I would hear, listen, mm. listen, yeah, you know implying that I wasn't listening. Like, listen to what? <laughs> you know, and then when I had these awakenings, I I, I went back and, and then the message was, you listened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen in here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I must have discovered your channel after September of 2021 because you were discussing a lot of these topics. And in my own journey, and I don't remember if I explained this to you beforehand or not, but in... um. I made this decision in 2020 and then acted upon it in 2021 because of delays, lockdowns, but I received training in core shamanic healing that has the lineage all the way back to Michael Harner. And I was just looking to consume content on this on my journey. And then I think I discovered some videos of yours talking about shamanic practices and then like I said, this must have been after your your shift in your awakening because I saw all these videos and I'm like, okay, I like what this guy's talking about. And I'm not going to get into specifics here either, but come January 2022, rules and restrictions around here like just completely stopped making sense. Like it got so confusing. And then we had, of course, the big trucker protest, which some people will say did nothing and myself and many others would say otherwise and that <laughs> the people in power saved face and wouldn't admit defeat and all that but it was it, early 2022 was a really crazy time for us and one effect i think of this awakening from 2020 was that many people were in their homes or in their bedrooms and they got online and they could begin exploring knowledge and perspectives they probably had no time to explore before mm. i bet you they didn't see that coming yeah i don't think they, they did a lot of people say the opposite of what they were wanting you know that's interesting yeah. a lot of people some people the more paranoid ones were wondering if they would limit access to the internet or shut it down because people were getting too much knowledge and going against what they wanted to say but that was a big big aspect of people switching off from 2020 and beyond in my opinion yeah that makes a lot of sense i can definitely see that very interesting yeah so you know i do you know as you've seen in my video and we can get into uh later i absolutely believe that there is a shift happening and even the forces that seem to be working against it everything that they're doing to try and limit the awakening actually hastens it. Which yeah. It's very, I find very hopeful. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah, I am not a black pill person. I have that same hope, but it's also rooted in stability and a grounded mentality. It's not just airy fairy <laughs> rainbows and unicorns. You know what I mean? So Michael, I want to go in kind of in depth with a couple of things going on on your channel as of very recently. And I think a good place for me to start are something I know you wanted to talk about, the solar flashes, because this is one aspect of your channel I haven't checked out in depth yet, but you have a lot of updates on them. And um, what are they? How often are they happening? And uh, what's the impact? Because this is something you're talking about at considerable length on your platform. Yeah. Well, um, just to let everybody know, uh, um, yeah, as I said, before September of 2021, I was fairly, you know, a lot of me was part of the narrative. I had no idea there was such a thing as the solar flash. I had no idea that there was a thing called the event or, you know, of course, people had talked about the, the shift to 5D. And that, that to me just sounded like, um, you, you know, new age, uh, yeah. hokey pokey. Rhetoric, I didn't, yeah. 
I didn't really put any um, anything into it. Um, and the truth is, if I hadn't had personal experiences with higher dimensional aspects to it, I probably still wouldn't buy into it. I mean, I sit here now going, you know, life still looks pretty normal. I don't know uh, how this is. But uh, so how I got into this was, um, I mean, I can't, I can't talk about the solar flash without talking about extraterrestrials. So, right, right. Um, and again, I before June of 2022, I didn't believe in extraterrestrials. Oh, I, well, okay. at least I didn't believe that there were any coming to Earth. Okay. But the reason for that is because I didn't understand or even know about higher dimensional existence. I didn't know about it, and so it was didn't become part of my understanding and and i think for most people that's true we're not wired to understand it but so it was hugely awakening for me. but to answer your question um in september excuse me in june of of 2022 i started doing ce5 which i had learned about just prior to that which is dr stephen greer's protocol for human initiated contact with extraterrestrials I had to find out if this was true because I watched his movie, yeah, uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, which I, I, I had such doubt around it, and I was hostile towards the whole idea. I was hostile in my mind towards him, but when I saw that movie, I saw that what these beings were—they weren't, you know, what we think of as these weird gray aliens walking around. Uh, abducting people, they were higher dimensional beings that were shifting in and out of the third dimension. And if anybody hasn't watched that movie, go watch it. Even if you don't believe it, you will come away going, that was a really great science fiction movie because the, the mm -hmm. stuff that's in there and the video footage and the photographic footage of the things that happen, it's, it's not anything that you would think of when you think of extraterrestrials. So I said, uh, what I saw is that these were very powerful beings that were identical in nature to what my Taoist teachers would talk about when they talk about perfected immortals and ascended masters. Mm -hmm. That's what they were talking about. And so when I saw that, I went, oh, my God, that's what those are. And they were empowering people spiritually and energetically. And I said, I have to have that. If that's real, I've got to have that. So I started doing it. I was scared out of my mind. And I have a video on my channel, how I became an extraterrestrial. And you can, I have, I've videotaped and audio uh, recorded what happened in my first actual um, experiences and how I got completely flipped out. Um, but I, just to be clear, the only reason I was flipped out was because it was beyond my human understanding. Right. Nothing negative, happened. only positive right. things happened. I just didn't know how to process it. Um, so that opened up a whole thing that started, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the yeah. construction. Yeah. Um, so once I had my first successful conscious interaction with clearly a higher dimensional extraterrestrial being, um, that started a daily interaction with them that didn't stop for three months minimum. I mean, it never really stopped, but I mean, it was intense every day, sometimes, you know, for hours a day, uh, both waking and sleeping. And so uh, we could talk about some of the really cool stuff that happened there. But to get to, mm -hmm. to your question, um, I, had a, I had a lucid dream, shamanic dream during this period. And you know, if you've ever had these, I've only had two or three of these in my life. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was in September of 2021, when uh, in my dream, this enormous pyramid, and pyramid to me has some symbolic meanings about, you know, uh, you know, very powerful spirituality and all that kind of stuff, yeah. awakening. All yeah. that. And there was this huge pyramid that was just outside of Earth's orbit. And it had this very intense, which I now know to be higher dimensional energy coming from it. And then beyond that was an even bigger one. And I came out of that dream and I said, I think, I think aliens are coming to Earth. Well, how am I getting that? I, I, you know, and I forgot about it. 
until, you know, uh, uh, almost a year later. And then I had this uh, dream where uh, I'll go ahead and tell you exactly what the dream was because sure. uh, symbolism is pretty much for me. But um, I was walking around the Himalayas in the dream and I was walking on this path, you know, and enjoying the mountains and, and it was more real than our this waking reality I'm in now. It was more yeah. real, more powerful. More real so than I real, knew, yeah. yeah. I knew I was in, at the very least, I was having a, a lucid shamanic dream and that this was important, pay attention. And I, and the energy was just absolutely amazing in the mountains and everything. And so I'm walking down this path and then I see this, on this one hilltop, I see this temple. And there are people gathered in the front, the portico of the temple, and there are some drummers there. Now, I happen to be trained in uh, African shamanic drumming. I've been mm -hmm. doing that. It's a whole other trippy thing. Um, so I love when I hear, um, you know, indigenous drums. So I, I went over there to go see what was going on. And I kind of came in the back of the crowd and I'm peeking up around, you know, wanting to see what's going on. And the drummers are playing this, what sounds like uh, some kind of um, processional for a king or somebody like, so I, I'm waiting for somebody to come down the dirt road, you know, on, you know, some kind of pedestal or something. And um, while they're doing that, I look up in the sky and there's this cloud. And out of the cloud, I could see something shiny inside the cloud. And I thought maybe it was a spaceship or I didn't know what it was, but I could tell that whatever was in that cloud was going to come out and it was going to be really powerful. And I, you know, some guy in the dream, I don't know who he is, some Tibetan guy or whatever. And I say, look in the clouds. There's something in the clouds. And out of the cloud, to my absolute shock, comes this crucifix. And it's a pewter crucifix. And if you know pewter, it's like disgustingly, you know, shiny, but it's like got a disgustingness about it. It's not like silver or, mm -hmm. you know, crystal. It's just like, you know, it, it's fake, but it's super, it's over, it's trying too hard, you know? And so this, this pewter, giant pewter crucifix is innately carved, looks like, you know, something like a, Catholic grandmother would wear on around her neck or something. But the Jesus on the crucifix, he he was only he was only half of him. And his it was like his navel was coming out of the middle. And he, you know, he didn't have a bottom half. And he was, you know, on there and he looked like a crucifix. He wasn't moving. And so it was obvious to me it was a symbol. But my first thought was, ah, oh, Christians were right. Jesus is coming. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I was disappointed, but I went, okay, well, hey, you know, it is whatever it is. Because you could feel that the energy coming from this crucifix was Jesus is coming back. The world, everything connected to that. The world is going to change. Everybody's going to awaken. Heaven on earth, total transformation. All of that energy was coming off of this crucifix. And then when I got to accept that, okay, well, the world's going to change. And yeah, Jesus is real. We'll find out about it. As soon as that happens, the the uh, Jesus on the crucifix comes alive, but he's like got this shocked look on his face, and he's looking up above and behind him to the sky above him, mm. and then he gets this look of shock, like <gasps> mm. dream ends. I wake up. <clears throat> I'm like, what the heck is that? What does that mean? So I know that the symbolism is for me. I've shared this, and a lot of people get different interpretations of it, but they're not me. You know, this, right. this dream is for me. And what I got from that was that there was going to be an event that everybody in the world was going to see. It was going to be something in the sky. And everybody around the world would be involved in this second coming mindset, whatever their religion was. Mm. And, um, but after the first experience of thinking that Jesus is coming or, you know, Krishna or whatever your belief system is, it, immediately after that, you'll notice that there's something far more powerful beyond what you could have imagined. And then, the dream ended because beyond that, I can't comprehend it.
It's so mm -hmm. beyond third dimensional understanding. So this was a, I was very happy because, you know, I had become over that past year, become so aware of how horrifically corrupt our world is. And, you know, what the Hopi's call the dark force people that are running this world. Mm -hmm. Far, 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 far more evil and insidious than I could have imagined. In fact, it's so, so unbelievable. It's, it's, it's worse than any, you know, farcical movie about, you know, e you know, when I, t there's some people I talk about it and they go, oh, so yeah. So the, uh, um, Dr. Evil's meeting on Skull Island with all the other villains and, and like, yes, <laughs> yes, that's exactly <laughs> what's happening. Um, when I became aware of that, you know, it became very difficult living on this earth and knowing that there was this other interdimensional thing going on. So that dream brought a lot of happiness and freedom and joy and hope to me, but I didn't know what it meant. So I, uh, at this point in time, by the time of that dream, I was now in regular communication with these higher dimensional beings. I, they would come to me, um, just to be clear, they're not physically, like, fit, they are physically there, but you can't see them with your 3D eyes. They're phased just out of 3D existence. You close your eyes and listen, you can sometimes see them walking around, but you look, you won't see anything. You can sometimes catch them on camera, you can catch audio, but usually if you're in your third dimensional mind, you won't see or feel anything. But you'll feel this energy, and if you close your eyes, you can see. So that's what I mean. They'd physically show up and tell me things and teach me things, and um, they'd show up in the middle of the night, but they would also show up if I directly connected to them. And that protocol that Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer teaches is actually, it's very simple, but it's actually a method that opens up a portal to other dimensions, higher dimensions. Anybody can do it. So I learned how to do that, close my eyes and I could do it. And then I could go and talk to them. So in one of those sessions, I went and was uh, talking to, uh, I don't know exactly who it was, um, but I said, so what is this event going to be? Is it going to be a fleet of spaceships that's going to surround the world and then people will wake up and they'll feel your energy and they'll know that we live in this you know, multidimensional universe filled with love? Because that's the big thing people should know about higher dimensional beings. The, the love that comes from them is absolutely unbelievably powerful and when i talk about the power of their higher dimensional um, energies know that embedded within that is just this unbelievable blissful love that's actually so intense it's actually challenging as a human to take it in because you feel mm -hmm. like it's, you're going to explode mm -hmm. um so i'm communicating and i'm i'm saying what is this event going to be is it going to be a fleet of spaceships and to my absolute surprise, I, I for the first time, I'm told no. They almost never say the word no. But I say, is it going to be a fleet of spaceships? And the being responds, no. It's going to be a series of solar waves of love uh -huh. that are going to come from the sun and hit Earth and go into the Earth. And all life and all consciousness on the Earth is going to shift up to uh, another level. And in my mind, I'm like, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Come So on. laughs> one of the ways, in case you should know, there's no shortage of people who are deluded out there, who believe they're talking to extraterrestrials and they're unfortunately, at least some of the time deluded. That's mm -hmm. one of the uh, pitfalls of this is that when you learn how to communicate telepathically, there's definitely you know, you got to be aware of, am I just deluding myself right now or am I having a telepathic uh, mm -hmm. communication? So one of the th ways that I know that I've actually just been given a telepathic communication is when I don't believe it. When I, when I want to gaslight myself out of it. And the weird thing happens is like you'll be gaslighting yourself out of it while your physical body is going, oh, right. I do that because your third dimensional you know, essence is expanding and it's, and it's frightening. They're not frightening. The after effects is frightening because you're trying to reconstitute yourself back into 3d. 
So I had that experience. My first thought was, this is nonsense. I am making this up. Yeah. And I went onto my channel and I was doing a live stream and I was talking about it. And I told them uh, what the ETs had told me. And I said, but you know what? I, I just, I think I'm making that up. And people start telling me, no, that's a real thing. It's called the event. It's called the solar flash. And I went, what? <laughs> and I went and looked it up. And to my surprise, back in 2012, people were talking about what they called the event, uh, the, you know, shifting to 5D, the ascension, and people started talking about this thing called the solar flash. And the way they described it, which this is one of the most, I mean, I, this is why I recommend everybody do CE5 or do, you know, my version, which is interdimensional meditation, which I teach free on my channel. Everybody should be doing that because they should experience this where you'll be told something that you go, what? And you've never heard of it before. And you go and look it up and you find out that's a real thing. And there's no way I could have known that. I've never heard that before. Then that's how you know you're talking to another person, right? Well, at least that's the way it looks. So um, I go and I look it up and remember what they told me, which I had never heard. I'd never heard anything like this. My mind never went to this that the ascension event is going to be a series of solar waves of love coming out of the sun, hitting the earth and shifting everybody up to the, you know, awakening the next level. So I go and I look up what the solar flash is. And not only is it that, it's energy coming from what people call the galactic center. The galactic center is a black hole. And the black hole uh, releases gamma radiation. Our sun does not release gamma radiation. These are all things I found out, which again, completely blown my mind. Scientists are now coming to the realization that gamma radiation is hitting the earth from the sun, even though it's not possible for the sun to release gamma radiation. So I found that all, all out later. But I go and I find out that according to these new age Looney Tunes, right? Because that's how they sound. When they're talking about this ascension event, they say that gamma radiation and high intensity waves of love from the galactic center are going to be somehow channeled to the sun. And the sun is going to release this energy to the earth in what people call the solar flash. And so when I looked at that and I saw that's exactly what these beings told me. Now, this is tough because I'm a very practical guy. I I pride myself on not getting caught up in all of the new age deluded nonsense. And here, these beings are telling me exactly what people have been saying since 2012 or before. So that was interesting. And for a while, I thought it was going to happen like next week. So after that dream, you know, I'm telling people everything's going to change. So we might not be here in a couple of weeks, you know, and I'm going to into interdimensional meditation. I'm asking them, when is it going to happen? And I try and see if I can squeeze out a telepathic date, you know, and I tried that a couple of times. And of course, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, one of the beings came to me and said, in a way that I could, I couldn't, you know, uh, I couldn't think myself into because he caught me off guard and then dumped a huge amount of energy in a telepathic message. And he said, the flash will come when you decide it's going to come. Oh. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't put a date on it. But on December 21st of 2022, right? Uh, what ends up happening is that that night I do my meditations and I, and I, you know, I leave my body and I go to other dimensions and my guide takes me, he says, I want to take you somewhere. I want to show you something, which they do all the time. And when that happens, if anybody ever does this, you'll know when you experience it, you'll know what I'm talking about. You know you're not making it up because you can feel yourself being pulled like it feels like you're on a roller coaster, but the energy is super intense. And, you know, you can feel yourself 
going through all these doorways and holes and weird and you're being blah, and then you you show up somewhere <laughs> and you can feel all this physically in your body if you're doing the you know the kind of meditation that i teach you astral body is is going somewhere else but your physical body is actually feeling all of this higher dimensional energy um so this happens and um i get pulled into this place it's another planet um on a completely different solar system galaxy somewhere and we get pulled into like this indoor stadium and it looks like uh, a college you know a university classroom you know that have the mm -hmm. you know the seats all around what do you call that the stadium seating in there auditorium and yeah it, yeah and there's all these people in this auditorium and these stadium seatings in the auditorium and there's somebody there on the stage and in there i can see all these light beings and i can tell that they're people's uh astral bodies and they've been taken here mm. and there's i can't remember how many i think i'm remembering three extraterrestrial light beings you could tell they were different species and all that anyway they all and they get up there and they say and by the way anytime you do this this is how you know you're with extraterrestrials the joy is absolutely off the charts so it's not like if you hear me talking about this and you're imagining going to some strange spooky place with the it's not like that at all it's like a constant party everybody is so filled with joy and you can't help but feel this incredible love and joy and all they do is they exude i mean it's it's just it's it's unbelievable they're constantly exuding joy they're constantly telling you how much they love you i mean it makes me emotional thinking about it how wonderful you are how amazing you are this is the way they communicate so if you're listening and going oh, i've had that but what you saw was a big scoop bookie thing uh, you weren't talking to, i don't know what was happening but you weren't talking to the to, to the extraterrestrial light beams. yeah so, mm -hmm. i get into this auditorium and this is going on and the joy is all over the place and these beings are so happy and they they the energy is so welcoming and they they say thank you all for showing up this is a very important um event we have to tell you it's begun it's going to happen today and they never talk like that they never say wow. things like hey now they never do that they say it's we planned it all out we've worked it out the solar flash is happening today and you need to go back and tell people about it and explain it to them and all that so i have that and then i come out of that meditation and here's what i've learned to do to stay sane mm. Yeah. In order to stay sane, I learned very early on that I had to take everything that they told me at face value. I can't, when they're telling it to me, I can't try and fight it or doubt it. I just accept it exactly as it is, like I'm watching a movie. You know, you don't try and tell the movie that it's wrong. You just watch the movie. I watch it. I accept it. I accept everything that they say, no matter how unbelievable or grandiose or, you know, whatever. And then when I come back into my body, I don't become emotionally attached to it. Because if you're trying to figure it out, it means you're emotionally attached, and that'll tear you to pieces. So in order to survive, I come back and I go, wow, that was interesting. I don't know what any of that means, but I accept it without it needing to be true. That's how I have to do it to survive. So I go to sleep knowing that they've said tomorrow whatever and i go to sleep and not expecting anything and sure enough at sunrise i get this uh i get woken up to this intense energy that's come into my room which feels exactly like what happens when a very powerful et physically comes into my space so i thought an ET had come into my space. Now they don't usually show up in the morning. I'll tell you the reason for that. Um, they made it very clear to me that um, the electromagnetic field around the earth actually is uh, a shield that keeps the third dimension within the earth's you know, uh, field. And so this is why in case you have spiritual experiences, you have them at night. People go looking for ghosts at night. 
ETs show up at night. It doesn't happen at seven o'clock in the morning. And that's because when the sun is coming up at the angle that it's hitting the earth, it increases the electromagnetic field. It makes it stronger. So it's very unlikely. It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely you're going to have uh, an ET experience at, you know, at sunrise. So that I knew, and here I am at sunrise, this energy comes in. It's, it's clearly uh, a light being energy, and it's very powerful, and it's woken me up, and I'm talking to it because I'm expecting there to be an ET on the other side. And I became aware that the energy that I was feeling was the sun. And of course, I had I haven't told you this yet, but I had already had my experience with the sun. And the sun is a conscious being. She's mm. a goddess. She spoke to me, and the moon has spoken to me. And and you know, this is one of the things my ET friends have done for me since my first initiation. When that first, I didn't tell you about this yet, but if you want, we can. Where yeah. the uh, uh, the first successful um ce5 event where a seven foot tall mantis being touched the top of my crown chakra and ever since then i've never been the same i've been yeah. able to, all kinds of things have opened up i just haven't been the same at all i'm gonna get it so, to that in just a second if you don't mind um yeah i want to focus on that and of course there's one very recent video from your channel i want to focus on as well and you've touched on a bunch of it but What's so interesting to me about the solar flash is another phenomenon I've heard about the sun are solar flares. Now, what's interesting about solar flares from what I know about and I've talked about it on some past episodes is it sounds like a giant, possibly catastrophic natural disaster that if solar flares were to strike the earth, our entire power grid might go out and it would just cause death and chaos and whatnot yep. and there's yep. another part of me that goes well if a solar flare happens maybe that's the only way that the iron grip rule of you know the dark controllers and the deep state will fall and will crumble and then we could really start this new beginning have you experienced anything especially since you just said you had direct communication with the sun and its being have you had any heard anything about solar flares compared to solar the solar flashes uh yes that's a very nuanced um subject and i'm actually really glad you asked it um uh, uh let me finish the story because i'm almost done and then i'll sure. come back to it. yeah yeah no problem yeah so the i wake up to the sun the sun is now a higher dimensional being that's now in my room talking to me and I become aware that I'm being, I'm actually shifting. It's shifting me up to a, another level. And um, that is a very empowering, frightening experience. But I, I thought this is it. Solar flash is hit. This is it. I saw visions in my mind of energy, you know, so solar energy hitting the atmosphere. I went outside <laughs> went outside expecting to see spaceships descending. So, I mean, that's how real this whole thing was. That didn't happen, but I was shifted up and I was in a whole other realm of bliss and awareness and the sun had done that. Mm. What I found out was that that day we were being hit with a coronal mass ejection. You know, there's solar flares, coronal mass ejection, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Uh, solar plasma was hitting the earth. And when it does that, the electromagnetic field gets weakened considerably. And so it was like, oh, my God, they said this was going to happen. And then I remembered that when I had asked, what is this? Event? They said a series of solar waves that are going to hit the earth. So the solar flash event, there might be one you know, final uh, event that's like a flash. I'm, I think that's very possible. To be honest, I don't know, but I think that's absolutely very possible and I wouldn't surprise me at all. But I do know that leading up to that will be more and more of these solar events that will be just like that. As it turns out, we are in a, a solar maximum, which happens very regularly where the 
uh, electromagnetic poles of the sun switch. Now, the reason why we don't have solar flash events all the time, every time this happens, is because we also have something that hasn't happened. I don't know when the last time it was that happened, but the last time that it happened, I believe to this degree, was when Neanderthals disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I'll explain that. We have what's called an incursion event, which is the electromagnetic field of the Earth is now unstable. People think there's a shifting of the poles, but my research says the poles aren't going to shift, but there's a huge instability and it creates holes in the electromagnetic field and the electromagnetic field is much less. You have the combination of the you know the solar flat the, the solar flares and the solar plasma that hits the earth when there's a solar maximum combined with the incursion event, you have an experience where solar radiation is hitting the earth to such a degree that it literally changes the DNA of all life on earth. Scientists, now this isn't coming from me or from new age wannabes. Uh, scientists who know nothing about the solar flash have recently come out and said, we know that when the Neanderthals disappeared was when there was a solar maximum combined with an incursion event. And scientists, you know, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but they said, we believe that the solar radiation mutated the DNA of the Neanderthals to such a degree that they couldn't continue to survive on planet Earth. And human beings must have evolved. Uh, and, you know, so this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the evolution of a species. So if that's scientists talking, from my perspective, I'm not married to this, but I'm thinking there might still be a planet where Neanderthals are walking around. They're just mm -hmm. shifted down to another level of reality, uh, another frequency. You know, because I've also learned that there are multiple frequencies of Earth sitting right on top of each other, and we could get into that. Each one of these things is a whole hour, so I won't. Yeah, I won't yeah. Go, I'll try not to go on on the tangents. But to answer your question, my I to be honest, I'm going to be truthful. I don't know. Do I think it's possible that there might be a cat catastrophic solar flare event? Um, that will wipe out all life as we know it or take down the grid or whatever. Um, I'm That isn't off the table at all. But what has been repeated to me over and over again was that we have nothing to be afraid of, that whatever is going to happen is going to be uh, beautiful and blissful and healing and wonderful. The feeling that I got wasn't that the event was going to be a destruction of the earth. I put a pin on that. We can come back to that later because I've learned some other things. But generally speaking, at that time, what I came to realize was that, no, there's going to just be this spiritual energy that the vehicle for that spiritual energy is going to be the solar plasma, the solar waves, the radiation that hits Earth. And now, again, scientists are saying that Gamma radiation is hitting Earth from the sun, which is exactly what the New Age wannabes were saying. And so if we have an event combined with a solar maximum where there's a big solar event or series of solar events, and the consciousness of the universe decides to send some gamma radiation, you know, via whatever wormhole from black hole to the sun, there you go. So I think that is a very real possibility. I don't know. The information out there, here's what we have to understand. The deep, uh, the dark forces absolutely know what is happening. And they are planting false information, half-truths, conflated information, and misinformation to keep people in fear. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about this solar uh, wave event that shifts everybody up where it's the, you know, because remember, if once you see Jesus in the sky and it turns out to be something even greater than that, there's not going to be any more banks. There's not going to be any more government. There's not going to be any more uh, elites. They're going to lose control because nobody's going to pay attention. Yeah. You know, the the bank is going to send you, you know, it's uh, pay bills now and you're going to go, <laughs> <laughs> forget yeah. that yeah buy a card oh i'm gonna 
and create a new little, you know, anti-grav machine. And they know it's it's curtains for them. Mm -hmm. And the way that they look at it, because they have their other means of getting information, uh, which is I'm getting information directly from conscious sources, beings, these beings of light. They're, some of them are physical beings from other planets, but they are directly connected to, as I said, this joy, this love that, you know, you want to call it God, call it whatever you want. The dark forces people, they don't have that. So they have to use other kinds of technology, which we look upon and think of as magic. And that's um, the, I forget what they call that mirror. You know what I'm talking about? Um uh, Anyway, it'll come to me. But they have devices where they can use light and bend light um, and electricity and electromagnetism. They can see into the future. They can see possible timelines. And so they see this coming. They've known this for, for a very, very long time, which is why they've been planning out for decades, if not hundreds of years, how they're going to keep control over the Earth. And they knew, 2012 hit, they knew that they were going to lose control. They didn't know how, they didn't know what, but they knew that after 2012, everything they did to try and keep control was only going to hasten this event. Mm -hmm. So my point is, is that a lot of people who are talking about this Carrington event that's going to destroy the earth, this is what the dark force people are waiting for. And the things that have happened on the earth, which again, I'm, I'm not going to get into specifics on, but let's just say uh, the weather events, the earthquakes, all of the wars, these are, aren't happening by chance. This is happening for a reason, and it's happening because they are trying to take control. Now, one of the, one of the scenarios that they believe will happen is that uh, this solar event, because they're seeing it from their perspective, which is they'll lose all control, they're seeing it as this world-ending catastrophe, which for them it is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they do think it's a possibility that the solar flash is going to hit, will wipe out all life on planet Earth. And they are doing two things about it. They already have a space program. I know how crazy this sounds, but it's true. And uh, don't believe me, go look on uh, Dr. Stephen Greer's YouTube uh, channel and look for his June 12th press club event where you hear uh, from thousands of whistleblowers who tell you that we've already got a space program. We've already got anti-grav ships, you know, warp drive that go as far as you want. We've already been out into our solar system. They won't let us beyond our solar system, the ETs, but we've got bases all over our solar system. So what the Dark Force people plan on doing is when this happens, they are going to go underground and they're going to go off world. And they plan on after everything, you know, the, the smoke is cleared, they're going to come back. And whoever's left, they are going to make into a slave population. Mm. And then they will take over the earth. So the things that look like somebody's trying to extinguish all life on earth is a real thing. And they're trying to hasten this event. They also believe that if they can bring Armageddon, that Jesus will come back. This is how nuts they are. They believe that if they can cause Armageddon, Jesus will be forced to come back. And then, of course, they believe that Jesus is going to set them up as the kings of the planet. Mm -hmm. These are how bonkers these people are. They're so mentally ill. It's, I mean, they beyond anything that, you know, beyond, you know, Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil isn't even close. Yeah. How crazy. Do you so to answer your question, um, I'm not, I don't know. I yeah. think it's possible that could happen. I'm not attached to anything. My personal feeling and my hope is that it's not going to happen that way. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. may end up, it's going to have the same effect because whether right. or not, you know, a solar flare takes out the internet and takes out their method of controlling or whether or not people, you know, a, a higher dimensional shift happens and people start looking at their wallets and their phones. It's like, well, this is ridiculous, you know, and then they've lost <laughs> all their power. No matter how it happens, they're losing their power. And this this is devastatingly frightening to them because it means, in their mind, uh, the end of their existence. Yeah, and that statement you just made about 
trying to bring on Armageddon to bring back Jesus. I have had a couple of very extensive chats on this show in the last couple of years on whether or not they are trying to manifest the book of Revelations and use it kind of as a system of play calling to bring about the end. And you just basically said, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So that blew my mind hearing that because it's something I've speculated on for a long time. Yeah, it's uh, and it's it's known. I mean, there the whistleblowers talk about it. They say, yeah, this is what the people told me. Doctor Greer has said numerous times he's talked with you know world royalty that have said that out loud. Oh yeah, we're waiting. For, we're going to make Jesus come back. You know, they're they're just completely yeah. loony. Yeah, but yeah, your instincts are right. This yeah. is the you know uh, very quickly. I want to say that sure the reason why part of the reason why there's so much conflation and everything is because people's instincts are 100 percent right. They sometimes come to the wrong conclusions. They sometimes conflate their fears on it or their you know ignorance of things, which is understandable. Ego but the even. feelings that people have that we are being controlled by some evil force just outside of our understanding that are trying to control our minds, control our bodies. That is real. And the frustrating part is to feel that and to know that and not know exactly what it is. And that's why people start coming up with theories. But interesting, yeah. you you felt it. Yeah, you know. yeah. And that was like, you know, that was over two years ago, too. So another thing that I want to talk to you about quite a bit, and uh, I have your YouTube page pulled up right now, and the post date says one month ago. Um, I watched this in the week leading up to preparation for this, and uh, there's some real hot takes I'd love you to go over on this okay. uh some people will like it and some don't and that's okay um i'm all about different perspectives here so the video truth about et's aliens anunnaki grays reptilians pleadians andromedas ce5 now this video i believe runs at about an hour and seven minutes and you've probably done more extensive chats about this as well we'll get into what we can because we i don't think we'll have time to cover the whole thing but Oh, Where would yeah. you like to start? What would you like to cover first? Because there's a lot going on here. Well, let, let me just you know cut to the chase. Um, what's really important is that we understand our assumptions. Mm -hmm. Most humans, uh, myself included, we operate from assumptions, and yeah. assumptions dictate our beliefs, our choices, everything. So if you operate from the assumption, like we were taught in Western religion, that there is a good God and a bad God, even though people, you know, Christians will say, oh, the devil isn't God. The truth is they treat him like an equal, like there's this good and bad. I know for a fact that there are demons. I've faced them myself. I've seen them physically. So I know evil beings exist. However, they're lower dimensional beings. They're not higher dimensional. Beings. So if you are of the assumption, listener, that you believe that there are higher dimensional evil beings that want to harm you, Bear in mind that that is an assumption. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but it is an assumption. I have a different assumption, which is coming directly from my experience with higher dimensional beings, mm -hmm. which is that once you get out of the third dimension, there are no evil forces. And I know that's hard to believe. I'm not saying it's, it's easy for me to believe. I know for a fact it's true from my experience. You don't know that for a fact, listener, because you may have not had that experience or you may have had a different experience. But if I start from that assumption that uh, there is no evil, then I have to take a look at the obvious issues. And the easiest one, the lowest hanging fruit is, um, is alien abductions. Now, I was scared to death of ETs. The reason, one of the reasons I was so scared in that video, how I became an extraterrestrial, was because, you know, I'm 60 years old. I spent my whole life reading books and watch, and you know, reading actual uh, people's accounts, reading, seeing movies of people's actual accounts of being abducted. I had no reason to believe that if aliens existed, they wouldn't abduct me. I had no reason to believe that. I had been so programmed to believe that. But there's no shortage of absolutely verifiable evidence of people who have been abducted. They've been abducted by what appears to be these grays and blue things and, you know, insectoids. There's absolutely verifiable evidence of people being 
physically experimented on. They have scars. They have implants in them. People have been, um, you know, women have been impregnated and then magically overnight the, the fetus is gone, you know. And so this is a very real thing. In fact, I just talked a couple of weeks ago directly with an abductee. And so she was not making stuff up. She wasn't mm-hmm. crazy. I can tell she was very honest and authentic and sane. I know this is a real thing. So how can you possibly say, Mahadeva, Michael Denny, how can you possibly say that there are no evil beings, no evil extraterrestrials? We know for a fact that they're doing all this. Well, the assumption, here's the second assumption, which has been a lie that has been given to the world. Against Dr. Stephen Greer's whistleblowers, if you listen to them, will explain this to you. The lie is we don't have a space program. We don't have technology that goes far beyond anything we've ever seen in science fiction movies. So the people that are going on to mainstream media, these so-called whistleblowers who are, and if you listen, embedded in their story is, I saw this this UFO and it was doing this and it was doing that. And we don't have that technology. And when you repeat something over and over again, it becomes part of people's assumptions. So in order to believe in abductions, you have to at least be partially believing that human beings aren't capable of this. So what I'm here to say, uh, which may be hard for some people to believe because We'll get in. We could get into why, but uh, you know, your your experience might say otherwise. Especially if you've been abducted. And there's a lot of people that watch these things that have been abducted, and nobody has more compassion for them than I do. But if if you believe that and you've been abducted, and I say to you, those are all done by humans, mm. that's going to be very hard to accept. Um, for so many so many reasons. But that's what I'm saying. So then we have to ask the question, can humans do this? And we now know they absolutely can. And I'm going to share with you, I've, there's been a couple of people who have communicated with me. One person has communicated, one of my, my students communicated an abduction event that she went through and she remembers being taken to a facility um underground and that there are other humans there military garb she was abused and experimented on in all kinds of ways and um you know of course then her me- they tried to wipe her memory and screen memories and all that and what she remembers is human beings taking her and doing all this stuff to her um another woman i don't personally know but i absolutely believe this account I, if i could remember her name i could tell you, you go look her up but I, I i'm very bad at that i don't remember But what she described is that she had been abducted by aliens. Like, and as you know, with many of these abductees, it's a regular thing. It'll happen Mm -hmm. throughout their whole life. They oftentimes will happen multiple times, especially, you know, ones that are being taken, harvested for their eggs or their semen and, you know, all that crazy stuff. Um, She said that uh, a typical abduction scenario was starting to happen. She saw lights that came, and this is interesting. People, people, this again, this gets past people's uh, filter. But when you first think about it, the, which if you realize what it is, you go, "That's that's definitely a human." One of the first things people talk about is these floodlights. Bam, they come on, and it fills the the room of where they're at, their house, to such a degree that it's brighter than day. This is what military people do when they are invading you. This is what cops do when they pull you over. They shine flashlights, at least in the U.S. They don't do it here. But in the U.S., they shine flashlights in your eyes so that you, you're disoriented and you don't know what's going on. So the first thing that the aliens do, who for some reason, even though they've traveled perhaps thousands or millions of light years faster than the speed of light through wormholes, the first thing they have to do is blind you with these spotlights. So she gets blinded with the spotlight. She starts going into the hypnagogic state where she's going into, um, you know, unable to move. She's paralyzed. That happens all the time. And again, here we have these very advanced beings traveled millions of light years. And for some reason, they have to put you in a paralysis state. Otherwise, I mean, it, 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 these things don't, don't add up. 
Does it sound like humans? Humans are definitely capable of that. So, so they get put in, she gets put into this state where she starts to go into this hypnagogic state and she can't move and she can't think straight and she knows what's coming. And sure enough, she sees coming down through the ceiling and coming in through the walls, she see these greys and the greys are walking towards her. Now, normally what happens is the greys get to her, they grab her and they physically pull her up through the roof and into the spaceship. That's how it normally happens. But this time, while the greys are coming through the walls and she's starting to, to lose consciousness and go into that hypnagogic state, she hears this, <laughs> this really loud noise of some, some kind of uh, technology breaking down. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, um, the lights go out and she wakes up and she's no longer being frozen. And instead of greys, there are human males in fatigues in battle fatigues and you know and they they stop they realize something's happened and they back away and they tell her stay put stay there they, and then she goes and looks out and there is one of those uh helicopters this the silent helicopters she gets into one of those the chinooks and takes off she's never going to be able to be they're never going to be able to lie to her again she knows what's going on these are, this is, you know, and Dr. Greer has has come out with his whistleblowers who've said that the Dark Force people have androids with AI. They have robots that are controlled uh, remotely, people in suits, and they have, again, electromagnetic weapons beam into your brain, things that aren't there, which is what was happening with this woman. She was seeing them come through the walls. They weren't. The 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 uh, the military guys in fatigues were walking through the doors. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they they were walking through the doors. They weren't flying in through the through the ceiling. And she wasn't floating up to something. Although that does happen, you know, she wasn't going to a spaceship. She was going to a Chinook, you know, helicopter that was going to take her to some base where they would do these things. And so they've got it all set up. You know, they've got the they've got the costumes. They've got the light. They got the uh, you know the 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 technology far beyond what we can understand. And we have to understand this. This is something that that I find very saddening, but it's very you know big in the uh, UFO, ufology community is that people will spiritualize alien abductions and they'll make all kinds of excuses. Well, they're more evolved than we are. They don't understand us. They have to study us. And then they'll try and turn it into something spiritual and, and make no mistake, in these abduction events done by humans, they also stage this where they experiment with their ability to use AI to send a telepathic message. In, and they will fill you with love. They will fill you with bliss. And then they'll experiment on you. And then they'll impregnate you and then steal your child from you. You know, they'll do all kinds of really abusive things to you. And this is what narcissists and psychopaths do. They mix this all up and it creates a uh, Stockholm syndrome. So unfortunately, a lot of uh, there's no shortage of abductees who don't like the experience and are very vocal about, I don't like this. I didn't want this. There are some who say, I don't know how to feel about it. And then there are others who spiritualize. It. And this, these are all responses to uh, very serious uh, psychological abuse this is this is you know PTSD so I, you know I feel for the people who are listening to me especially the abductees and they're going to get hurt because they they've spiritualized this abuse event mm -hmm. the other thing that is interesting is that there are people who have been abducted who have also experienced actual higher dimensional ETs a woman that I spoke with she, and of course, they don't know. They conflate them together and they don't know that there's a difference. And the ETs, by the way, they're not interested in, you know, uh, in, you know, uh, um, trying to get all into all the details and trying to correct what's right and what's wrong. They're only interested in loving you. So they're not going to sit you down and go, yeah, that other thing, that was humans and this is us and we love you. They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. They're going to just take care of you and love you, you know, whenever they can. And she talked about, she was in a lot of pain, and she was, of course, confused about whether 
her abduction experiences were real, if ETs were real, and if the, you know, what I would consider to be the false love experiences where these fake AI beings are pretending to love her and she thinks she's being loved. She reaches out and she says, if you are real, I need you. I need you to heal me. And what she described then is exactly what happened to me. She felt energy come into the room. She felt for a second like she couldn't breathe, which is higher dimensional energy that, that it feels like it's pressing on your chest when actually it's not. You feel like you can't breathe, but the truth is you can. If you just relax, you go, oh, that's just my body responding to higher frequency electromagnetic energy. And they healed her. And she, like me, looking around the room, she can't see anything, but she closes her eyes and she can see the beings around her and they can she can see them putting energy into her. So this all creates confusion. So to answer your question, the, the short answer to that huge video, because I go into each one of them, blah, 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 yeah. is that um, any experience that has anything associated with any kind of abuse or even the lack of uh, respect for your boundaries or any doubt as to what are the intentions of these beings, I'm saying is human. Those are humans doing that, not mm. ETs. It's so, so that's yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad you said that. It's so interesting because uh, on my Patreon, I do a monthly watch along with my brother who has his own podcast of our classic X Files episodes. And there's an episode of where there's an abduction case, and you actually see that it's the military men in these gray alien zip up suits and stuff like that. So I mean, that's been explored through some of our programming too. Um, one thing I want to bring up, uh, based on that video that I found interesting is that, uh, on my season finale, which is airing December the 8th, I'm having on a woman and I'm announcing this publicly here for the very first time who claims to be, uh, an alien human hybrid or an ET human hybrid with ET DNA claims to have hybrid children claims that all of her experiences here on earth and up on their crafts have been nothing but loving and you know high vibrational unconditional love and i've read her book and i had my own consultation with her as well and i have no reason not to doubt anything she says and this is also going to circle back to the story you said earlier about the seven foot tall mantis being um i won't get into the full details right now but i've been re reacquainted with some psychedelics in the last year and a half and i saw some mantis beings on one of my journeys and when I did my consultation with this woman, which I'll get into more in depth when that episode airs, um, I'm heavily connected to loving mantis beings out in the star systems. And I have other experiences to kind of back that up that I won't get into right now, but uh, just kind of your overall thoughts on stories of hybrids and then your own mantis story. Okay, so... Let me just be clear that um, I can only talk about my experience and what I know through my experience. Having mm -hmm. said that, there's so much that I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, to the best of my knowledge, I've never been physically on a craft. Astrally, yes. Have mm -hmm. I seen them physically? Yes. Have I personally been on one? Not to my knowledge. So I can't talk about that. Um, I have been led to believe and I get encouragement when I talk about I, when, I, when I say encouragement, even as I'm talking to you right now, I'm connected to them. Yeah. I can feel them. Yeah. And I, and they, they, they like to comment, you know, and mm -hmm. energetically sure. going down the path they like, and I can feel their, their, their really blissful energy. So um, it's, I've come to, to the belief that I have been uh, hybridized. But it's not from any kind of uh, physical interaction. It's just because the energies, I'm sure, have played around with my DNA. Mm -hmm. And as we've come, science has also come to the conclusion that DNA isn't a blueprint. It's something that changes throughout your life. Everything you do can change your DNA. And that change goes into your offspring. So this is how you know everything evolves. Um, so I believe that I have been hybridized because of that but I don't know that I'm hybridized in the way that I'm hearing you talk about. 
Sure. What do I think about this woman's? I've never heard anything like that, but that doesn't mean it's, I mean, anything is possible. But one thing I've learned is that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. If I were to talk to her and she were to, con you know, convince me that her experiences are completely 100% loving on all counts. If I heard some things that were similar that I know that only somebody who's experienced this could know, I'd probably believe her. I don't understand it, um, but, you know, I, um, there's also, you know, what came to my mind, which is sounds different than what you're describing. I already know that there are human-alien hybrids from the human programs. Mm -hmm. So there are humans in the dark forces. By the way, every single uh, alien craft that has been downed has been shot down. Right. There has never been a UFO that has crashed. Yeah. Um, since before World War II, the dark forces have had the technology to shoot crafts down. We've been making crafts and flying them since before World War II. Um, so uh, I know that when they shoot down a craft, one of the reasons is they want to get the bodies. If they can get them alive, great. They'll do that. But they'll also get the bodies and they, you know, they, they want to experiment. So they're trying to do their, they're trying to, you know, make their own hybridized version for their own evil purposes. Um, and I know that those experiments are going on. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if they've successfully created human alien hybrids. And it's a very, it makes me very sad to think that that's a possibility. So that's one thing. So I want to make sure people aren't conflating the two. Now, I don't know. To your, from what you claim, do you believe that she's saying that she's one of these human alien hybrid children? Or, you know, how does she describe it? Um, it's hard to say because I'm doing this from memory and I finished the book several weeks ago. But like I said, I have corresponded with them in different means. And I have no reason to doubt them, um, no matter how they've laid it out. It's just, I was just really curious about your take on it, because uh, some of it's a little different from what I've heard you talk about. So, but yeah. you're right, it's not your experience to really comment on. So, yeah, I, I can't, I mean, you know, like I said, I only know what I know. Um, if it's somebody being abducted and uh, taken on a ship by a being and then, um, their DNA extracted and then used to create in the alien's lab a, a hybrid. I have doubts about that. I mm -hmm. can't say that it's not true. And my doubts come from, again, my direct interaction uh, with these beings. I mean, that's just so far from their, it's just not even on their radar, you know, right. any kind of idea like that. Yeah. You know, they just have no need, desire, or wish for any of that. And um, so that puts doubt in my mind. Um, again, I would have to read the book and talk to her to come to and, and compare it to my experience. But I'm hesitant to believe that, but I'm not against the idea. If the only thing that matters, again, is that this is done without any violation of boundaries yeah yeah and that that is the rule and i will say this and i you know this is i've i've been like this even before i met these these beings if i came to the conclusion that these beings were doing anything along those lines i would go to war with them. right i will not tolerate any being doing that and if if that were true i would absolutely uh, i wouldn't flip and change and make excuses for them. I would go yeah. just like I did when I left Christianity. I went to, yeah. you know, Jehovah and I said, I'm not worshiping you. You're abusing these people and I want nothing to do with it. If you're going to throw me in hell, go right ahead. I'm right here. I would say that to the most powerful ET. I'd say, if you're violating people's boundaries, you're my enemy and I'm yeah. coming after you. But that is absolutely the furthest thing from my experience from them. So, but I, it, there's so much that I don't know. I can't possibly. I mean, the truth is, I absolutely believe that, and make sure that there's a difference here. I, I believe that human beings are the result 
of extraterrestrials crafting and guiding the evolution of human beings. Mm -hmm. Now, is that done in a lab like the Anunnaki's? No, no, it's not. The as I said, I'm a I'm a hybrid, but by hybrid I mean that by interacting with these higher dimensional beings and the energy, my DNA is shifting. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah hybridized and i do believe that we can shift up to a you know this is the taoist uh belief system you know that um when you get to a certain level in your practice you phase out of the third dimension you go up to a higher dimension and you're going to tell me that that doesn't involve dna changing i'm going to have a hard time believing that. yeah absolutely so, yeah short answer is i i'm skeptical um but Again, I any absolutely anything is possible. Sure. I'm just here to understand and decipher as many different perspectives as possible. And I'll be honest, sitting in the host chair, it can get overwhelming at times. And sometimes I need to take a break because there's so much going on up here and in here, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I always like to ask, uh, before you share your Mantis story, I just have one more thing on this video because I do encourage everyone checking this out to go check out your video that's on the YouTube channel is um, are you able to comment and we don't have to get into specific, you know, names of people or anything, but people who are um, let's say uh, channelers or they're leading some type of an agenda that doesn't exactly jive with your experiences with the ETs, like kind of like the pitfalls of doing uh, ET research in that realm. If you know what I'm saying. I do. Yeah, and I've talked about that. I'm pretty outspoken about it. There are there are some people I can mention because they've outed themselves. Corey okay. Good, yeah, you know Corey Good, uh, which was sad for me because he actually has information where he's gotten it. I don't know, yeah, but he has information that's actually a lot of it is very accurate. Yeah, just to stop um, you there for a quick sec, I'm not sure. super familiar with his work, but a lot of people I follow that I tend to trust say very um i don't know i not disrespectful but they say very trepidatious things about him and his work that you know maybe he's not the real deal so you're far from the first i've heard that from yeah well so he's a good example because yeah. you know here's we have to understand this unfortunately but there as i said there are people who are deluded i've run into people like that who i know think they're telling the truth and they're completely deluded um and so there's really nothing to say because, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. And then there are people, um, assuming I'm not deluded, <laughs> and there are people like me who have actual physical uh, encounters and experiences. Um, and then there are the con artists. And mm -hmm. listen, there's a huge amount of money to be made in ufology, mm -hmm. huge amount of money. And you're going to go where the money is. And the money, just like in any part of uh, mainstream media at all is where's the fear where is the intensity where is the you know all of that and you know all you gotta do is watch the movies i mean you're gonna watch a movie about a friendly alien or are you gonna go watch a movie about aliens coming in and you know tearing out your throat and feeding yeah. off you're gonna go watch the scary ones it's just much more exciting so Corey Good, and again, I'm not outing him because there are videotapes of him in court admitting that he made it up, that he right. lied because he wanted to make money and he didn't want anybody else using any of his terms because he wanted to be the sole source of that. And he had a ton of people following him and all that other stuff. So um, there's got to be others. Mm -hmm. But you'll find they're easy to detect. They're easy to sniff out because they will... They will always talk about bad aliens. They will talk about evil reptilians. They will talk about um, the war between the good aliens and the bad aliens. They will talk about the United States government aligning with the bad aliens or the good aliens. Anything like that, you can toss it out. Mm. That is at, at best is conflated mm. and isn't accurate. My experience with ETs is that they don't have any formal connection to any body 
not me. I can't represent them. I can't say, you know, as a channeler, like many channelers do, mm -hmm. uh, I am the sole representative of Zothar the Magnificent, right? And Zothar says, well, and they channel and they start saying, you know, whatever they say. But that whole scenario of me setting myself up as the one channel for that one being, they don't, ETs do not operate on that level. Mm. And there's so many reasons for it. But one is because the person, they're not interested in people um, profiting from it. Now, I got nothing against people going if they're going to speak somewhere, charging a fee to speak or, you know, yeah. write a book. I got nothing against that. And neither do they. But when somebody wants to put on the mantle of now I speak for so-and-so or I speak for this race of beings, um, you're, there's no way for that not to be all about you. Even Can share experience of this direct experience. Uh, this was, I don't know how long ago this was, but this was when I was trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this stuff. I didn't know what was what. And I wanted to talk on my channel and I wanted to get more people on my channel so they could hear about this. And, you know, I wanted to, to I, I, I wanted to tell the whole world about it. And I also wanted to be more, uh, more successful and more prosperous. I wanted all those things were going. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to judge anything that's happening to me. So I went into interdimensional meditation. And there are there are councils. So this is, again, we're mirroring some truth. There are councils of beings out there. There's a council of five, a council of 12, a council of nine, a council of three. And they all have a lot of power, you know, in, in how to help, you know, life evolve and all that. And, and I have communicated with uh some of these councils. So I wanted a definitive answer <laughs> early on. And I went <laughs> and I and I, I didn't talk directly to them. I talked to an emissary and I said, here's my question. Can you tell me what is really going on? What you guys are doing? Tell me about uh, what you're doing to help planet Earth, what your plans are. Can you give me some some lowdown? Because I want to get more people on my channel. And yes, I do want to be more prosperous myself. I don't want to lie about that. Sure. I want all that. And, 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 I didn't, and I didn't care. I wasn't attached. I'm just asking the question, can I do that? Will you guys tell me that? Secret information. Here's what happened. The emissary takes off, right? I'm staying in meditation. I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes. That's what happens. Comes back and says, the answer is no. <laughs> and, they, and then they went on to say, the answer is no, because you are starting to understand what is really going on. You're getting mm. too close to some dangerous truth that's dangerous for you and dangerous for other people. And you're also looking to profit from it. So that's a very clear that they don't have any interest in boosting anybody up, anything like that. Um, another experience I, I had, um, again, I don't know what's going on. They come to me, you know, one story I talk about in my book. I have two books, by the way, in case your readers don't know. Mm -hmm. Extraterrestrial Coming to Earth and um, Interdimensional Revolution. And in my first book, I talk about one of the first interactions I had with an ET, which we can talk about. But briefly, what he said was, you are a probability. And then he told me how to go and from the potential probabilities of my timelines to pick the one that I wanted and manifest it. And I'm living in the house that was, you know, that uh, experience. Huh. And right. so I started thinking, well, crap. I mean, if I can create anything, what about money? And then what about these guys? Can these guys just make money appear out of nowhere? I mean, that would be great. Right. So I'm like, I'm not going to judge it. I, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, the worst thing is if you judge it and then hide it, then you're in trouble. Uh, so this is coming up. I'm not judging. I'm, I don't know what the morality of is of the universe. But, so I go into meditation and same thing. I go to an emissary and I go, Hey, can you guys just like give me a million bucks? <laughs> can you like manifest that and, and make that happen? Mm -hmm. Guy goes off and he comes back and 
the being that comes back, I've seen him before. I've, I've met him before. But the being that comes back looks human. And for all intents and purposes, he looks, you know, like a European with a beard. And he looks like he came out of the Middle Ages. And he, and this is a quote. And he says, you know, you know that we can't get involved in that, right? You know that we can't. <laughs> It's a direct quote. Yeah. So I know for a fact that these beings are not interested in boosting anybody's ego or, you know, uh, making, giving them an, a, a, you know, a thing to profit hugely on. Uh, and, and they definitely don't, they don't channel. My experience is, look, it's, is it possible? Yes. Have I been in situations where, I'm in telepathic communication. Is it possible if somebody was standing next to me that I could be going, what he said was this, and then the next thing he said was that, yeah. Do you want to call that channeling? Fine. Um, but the idea that people are getting their bodies taken over, that's a possession thing. And it it smacks of ego on the part of the ET. Hello, I am Zothar the Magnificent, and I come to you today with the transmission. And they just don't have anything to do with that. Last yeah. thing is, here's, here's the 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 where the money meets the road here is that everybody involved in that gets devalued. The person being the channel is devalued because. They, like I'm telling you from my experience, here's what I think, what I feel. I'm talking from me. Yeah. I'm not valuing myself. If I don't know, I don't know. If I do know, I know. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm not saying, I'm not saying I am the word of the Lord. I'm me. And I'm taking full responsibility for what I say. If you're a channel, by definition, you are not taking any responsibility for what's being said. And you are saying that you don't have the the sense the smarts the value to speak from your own experience so the person who ironically is wanting all of this attention is doing it because they're saying i don't have any value but zothar does and the people listening are devalued because by listening and engaging with that they're saying we can't connect to zothar ourselves we can't connect to these beings so we have to get the special chosen yeah to speak to us and everybody is devalued and that's why the messages that come out of those channeling sessions at best are very superficial uh stuff that you can't do anything with that anybody could say and the only reason it means something is people think it's coming from an et um and if they do start getting into specifics they'll start getting into evil this and evil that and who's better than who and you're better than other people because you're listening to me and mm -hmm. ets want nothing to do with that they the way ets come across when you experience them as you've experienced it with the mantis beings so you know i know you know what i'm talking about yeah. they treat you like you're their family they're yeah. like, sit down next to me, and how are you? It doesn't matter that they're up here and you're down here. In fact, they don't see you that way. When they look at a human, this is really important for all humans to understand. I've learned this, and this is, by by the way, the hardest lesson I've learned is to understand who I am in higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. so not this person you're seeing here. This is just my avatar. So I can function in the third dimensional video game with that going on. But they don't see the avatar. They see you as you are. And as you are is everybody on this planet. If you got here, it means that in the higher dimensions, you already are a deity of magnanimous proportions. You have strength and power that many, many higher dimensional beings want to achieve. The deities themselves have so much, and as I say that, I'm getting flooded with energy. The deities themselves have such tremendous respect and admiration for every single soul that chooses to become human because they know how incredibly difficult this is. It is so difficult being human and holding on to yourself and not being crushed under the weight of all the stuff that we got to deal with. And so if you got here, it means that you know, on the other side of this this dimensional barrier, you are like the 
People worship you. There are beings out there worshiping you. So there's no need for any of this nonsense. And right. when they interact with you, my point is they're not going to, I am from the so-and-so welcome beings. And they don't do that. They mm -hmm. get, hey, it's you. I missed you. You don't yeah. remember me. But I missed you. And, and this happens so, when I go into interdimensional meditation. I get beings coming from other galaxies and other planets. And, you know, my my uh, you know, my go between will say, yeah, somebody from another galaxy wants to talk to you. And this light being will come in and they'll go, oh, it's you. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. You have no idea. We're all talking about you. Yeah. We're so happy. Keep doing what you're doing. And oh, my God, we're so proud of you. Do you have any idea? Thank you so much. That's what you get. So the channelers, when I hear them, I can tell they're not. They're coming. They're coming from some other weird place that has nothing to do. It's mm. coming from a child's fantasy of what they think it is. Mm. It's not coming from the reality. Yeah. That's my opinion. Take it for what it is. Hey, all good, all good on here, man. Um, it's interesting you bring up the multi-dimensional meditations because I have a little bit of experience with that myself. And I've experienced my own version in the higher realms, and it's pretty amazing, and it's pretty overwhelming. Michael, yeah. in just a few minutes here, because it is getting a little late on my end, and I know you have, like, boundless energy, and you're good to go, and uh, we'll definitely uh, try and hook up for round two sometime. But uh, before we let the true believers know where they can find you and what you offer and where they can buy and read your books, are you good to share your Mantis being experienced with yes. me real quick because it's just yep. it's something that's going to be near and dear to my heart so i'd love to hear it yes absolutely so uh i was doing my third ce5 session i did two even though i had recorded balls of light flying around me and and voices disembodied voices i had evidence that i had already made contact i wasn't ready for it and i was gaslighting myself out of it i did the third one and i had been told even though i didn't believe it that we can't get through to you we're sending the big guns somebody who can crack your shell and, and really get to you and so again if people want to watch they can watch the video how i became an extraterrestrial on my channel and um i did the ce5 protocols and i in meditation i went out in this this bright red ball of like electric glowing, you know, light just came at me and it was a ship. And I astrally went in again, not knowing that it, I thinking I'm just making things up in my head. Right. And I go into the ship and there are these, what look like these tall red, I don't know if they were red because they're physically red or just the light from their ship yeah. made them look red, I don't know, but they're tall and they're red. They look like they're about seven feet tall and they're all looking down at me and they're like, yep, we're coming. We're on our way. So I come back down and I'm doing the protocols and I'm using the app on my phone and putting it into my my radio because I think that they need you know, to find me, which they don't. I'm thinking they're needing to find me on their their instruments, not even knowing if any of this is real. And uh, as this happens, I feel to the left and behind, I'm feeling all this energy as I talk about, it. the left and behind me, I feel, you know, it feels like somebody just beamed down. I look behind me, you can see, you know, I have it on video of me looking behind me, there's nothing there. And then I go, because I'm, I'm feel this energy in my heart and I see the color red and I see this energy, I feel this energy. <laughs> Really beautiful, really powerful, really wonderful. But I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm just making, again, I don't know what's what. So I'm doing the thing on my on my radio, and he squawks back on the radio, which I explained in the video is impossible to do. Nobody on another radio can make the sounds that your walkie-talkie or whatever. When an ET is telling you, they're responding to you. That's an impossible thing to do. And I've, I've come to find out they do that either by literally physically touching it or sending uh, electromagnetic energy directly to your radio. Um, so that happens, and I get flipped out, and I go, oh, my God, somebody's here. Somebody's coming. And um, I, I, I go outside, and I look for the ships, and I can't find them. And I can feel this energy around me. And I'm, I'm starting to have this telepathic communication, but I can't tell if it's my own head or what's going on. But I know that something is happening because my radio is going nuts. 
it's and it's it's directly responding to my questions, my thoughts, and my verbal what I'm saying verbal. And so this is all happening. And when I realize this is real, uh, I can feel a finger on the top of my head. And um, you know, and anybody who knows what that is has been in any of you know spiritual practice. They know this is Shakti Pot. Somebody is opening up your crown chakra and putting energy kundalini they're awakening you you know they know that and so i'm wondering if it's a fly or something and i'm doing this and the finger just goes like this you know he's just responding to me and letting me know he's still there and then uh, i go outside and i'm starting to get really scared but what happens to me is i get overwhelmed with just this emotion of I can't even put into words. Uh, I'm sadness and love and all of this. And I start to feel really unworthy. And I've come to find out that's a normal thing that happens when you're in the physical presence of a higher dimension. Higher dimensional energy brings up all of your unresolved three-dimensional garbage, which keeps you in the third dimension, mm. which is guilt and self-devaluation and things like that. So I'm starting to feel that and I'm feeling all this fear and all the stuff that happens that I didn't know is actually just what your body does when you're in the presence of a higher dimensional being. And I say, because of the abuse I went through as a kid, I don't feel worthy of this. And I'm hearing this come out of my mouth. Hmm. You know, and I'm about to fall down on the ground and cry because I'm feeling so much love. And, you know, it's just, it's overwhelming to me. And I say, I need to know that I'm worthy of this. And my radio goes, <laughs> it goes crazy. And then, of course, the the reality of something physical happening, meaning there's a physical being outside of, you know, my my physical, my eyeball senses that's doing this, touching my, and all of that reality comes flooding in. And at the same time, the clear message of how worthy I was, that you are worthy, you are valued. And I repeated that mm. a couple of times in different ways, and it just the, the message was overwhelming. And I went, and uh, as you see in the video, I go and and I, the you know he says let's take a walk, and I take this walk, and when we stop on the sidewalk are these um, somebody had spray painted somebody was going to do some electrical work, but the symbol they use is the Yuhuaj room, which I had just had a reading, and Yuhuaj means spiritual transformation, um, shamanic initiation. And then when we got that, and I saw that, then the radio stops and telepathically, he says, that's it for now. See you soon. And then, whew. but when I went back to my house after all of that, and I walk in the house, um, I get this flash in my mind of his spaceship. And it's hovering outside my bedroom window. Of course, I rushed outside to see if it was out there. But the message was, I'm here with you. And because I had said, don't come in my house, he parked it right outside. He didn't come in. And he came later. Uh, uh, we'll I'll, I'll, uh, end this quickly. But uh, a couple of weeks later, um, I was taking a break because I was having a hard time processing all of this yeah. incredible stuff. And... I'm lying on the couch and I'm looking up at uh, you know the sky and it's it's sunset, and down through the clouds this huge red orb, which is his spaceship, electrical red ruby red orb, comes down through the clouds and I get up and I go, what the f yeah. is that? Disappears immediately and I hear him say, let's talk, and then I invited him in. And he started teaching me mantras. He started teaching me energy. He started teaching me all this, you know, all these practices. And um, yeah, he's easily, I've, I feel that he's the most powerful, most helpful being I, I've ever personally encountered. And he called himself my brother. He says he's my brother. Mm, yeah. So that was... That's some of my experience with him. There's been a lot more, but that was... Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I love these interviews I do where two hours flies by in the snap of the fingers, and we're just about to approach that now. Uh, Michael, one thing I'm going to say, and some of my listeners are going to have my ass for this, but I have to do it this way. I have a story to share with you off the air after we stop recording. Okay. And the reason being is that it touches on 
quite a few things you've said in some of my own recent experiences, but for a number of reasons, there's a method to my madness. I'm not going to share them on the show for another week until next week's show. Okay. But I want to share them with you privately, if you don't mind, because I think you're going to enjoy yeah. them. Okay. So with that being said, and I'm sorry, I get grilled so much for leaving people in suspense on the show and in my personal life, but it, trust me, it needs to be done this time. So where can the true believers consume your content? We touched upon it earlier, but also you have books, you have a Patreon with some um, mentorship, I believe. So like, I'd like to learn all about that before we sign off. Yes. So um, you can go to my main platform, which is my YouTube channel, and it's thunderwizard.com. And I spell it out, thunderwizard, D-O-T-C-O-M. You can just, you know, Google Thunder, Word, Thunder Wizard YouTube and my channel page will come up. Obviously, my website is thunderwizard.com. And there, yes, people can subscribe at various levels. But um, the subscription, I never just take what Patreon is, which is, you know, people give you money and then you, you know. Um, I offer all kinds of uh, video packages. So if you want to learn the most powerful spiritual practice in my experience on the planet, go subscribe at thunderwizard.com, the warrior 90 day lightning chingon, but you can even just learn shamanism and all kinds of things all the way up. There's, there's hundreds, thousands of videos on it. Mm -hmm. um, my books can be found at michaelwilliamdenny.com. Um, last name D E N N E Y. You can also just uh, look on Amazon uh, Audible and uh, what's the other one? Amazon, uh, Kindle. Kindle. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. You can look for me. Uh, the the three books that I'm really wanting people to look at are Extraterrestrials Are Coming to Earth. Second one is Interdimensional Revolution, and the third one is The Shamanic Secret Commandment to a Perfect Life. Um, I do have. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see on the latest videos you see. Uh, 923.thunderwizard.com if people are interested in having a severely discounted collection of all of my practices, even stuff that I've charged thousands of dollars for in the past, they can go take a look at that. Mm. I think that's everything. Very good. And uh, I think whenever we do this again, I really want to go in depth on shamanic practice and shamanism because I I have had a brutal time trying to find someone come on this show and talk about it at length. I've talked about it in snippets here and there. So that'll be something plus many more whenever you do this again. And uh, thank you for taking the time. The timing of this was super appropriate, I think, and I enjoyed it. My privilege. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. And thank you to all of the listeners. Uh, my last thing I'd like to say is don't take my word for anything. Go and Google CE5 protocols, the letter C, the letter E, the number five protocols, and or go to my YouTube channel and do the free guided interdimensional meditations. Have your own experience. Don't trust me or anybody. It's the best way to learn. Great. Thank you for that. Once again, my thanks to Phantom Phil over at unexplainedinc.com for allowing me to be on his podcast. And again, please take advantage of everything that's available to you, all of the free stuff on the YouTube channel and the playlists. Most importantly, if you really want to help this channel and help my work and get the most powerful practices available to humankind, which will allow you to do the same kinds of things that I do. Go here to thunderwizard.com, subscribe to the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong, get all of my books at michaelwilliamdenny.com, 923.thunderwizard.com has all of my video uh, packages, which I'm giving away uh, $5,000 worth of stuff almost for free. That's it, my friends. I love you all. Please take very good care of yourselves. And I will see you all very soon. Oh.